we have folk in the church that don't really get in depth in the scripture. And I want to express this tonight. Uh, because of lack of depth in the scripture. Now, when I say lack of depth, I'm talking about really taking the time to read and to study the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You can read the Word of God, right? And that's great, that's wonderful. Yes. But if you're not getting anything out of it when you finish reading, then something's missing. That's right, amen. We, the only way we're going to grow, the only way we're going to get knowledge and attain knowledge is you're going to have to meditate on the scriptures or look right. at the scriptures and dissect them. Right. Rather than get, I had this habit, Brother Darrell, years ago that even as a minister, I would run across something I didn't understand and I would just skip over it. Rather than dissecting it and finding out what it really means right. and how I could apply it to my life. Mm -hmm. Because scripture is just not something that we want to read and just say, okay, I've read the Bible. I want to learn how to live. Right. Amen. I want to yeah. learn how to possess this vessel that he has given me so yes. I can possess it with honor right. and give him praise and give him glory. Amen. And we were talking about the fact that because of the lack of depth in some people's lives, and we were mainly talking about our family members, that because of that lack of depth, their life is in chaos. Mm -hmm. Their life is in, they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They don't have a foundation anymore that they can turn to to find that what they need. And so I want to preach a subject that's kind of funny. I just titled this this way. Keeping a good house. Keeping a good house. Now my wife, if we know company is coming, and whether company is coming or not, if she takes in this cleaning day, <laughs> it's cleaning day. Don't talk about fishing, hunting. It's cleaning day. <laughs> and she's learned that if she can get me started mm -hmm. and get me going, mm -hmm. that I have become this clean, the whole house freak. <laughs> and every man of God say amen. <laughs> and I begin to get on this, I'm wanting to clean everything. I, I, I just get everything. I even came over here the other day and we got started cleaning some things over here at the church and I just got carried away. I was chunking stuff left and right. And she was saying, do you think we need that? Do you think we need that? And I'm chunking stuff left and right. And I'm saying, we need to clean out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To keep a good house takes work. That's right. Amen. To possess a body that is bringing honor, a soul that is bringing honor unto God takes work. That's right. Amen. And it takes effort. Mm-hmm. It takes studying. It takes praying. It doesn't come overnight. Somebody say right. amen. amen. So I want to talk a little bit about this tonight. First, or I say first, it's only Colossians. Colossians 3, would you stand for the reading of God's word? Colossians 3, verse 16 and 17. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in, and here's the key, word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Father, in the name of Jesus, take these few words tonight, minister to our hearts and lives, change us, mold us. Lord, we don't come to church just to worship, we come to be changed. Lord, let us leave here changed by your spirit, as we'll give you all the glory and all the praise. Holy Ghost, speak to us through signs and wonders, and as we give you praise and glory, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We may be seated. Don't forget, Sunday we will be launching our vision. Uh, we will have things set up here. We will have some pamphlets so that you can follow along with the vision.
vision. Um, I am super, super excited yes. over what the Lord is going to do. Amen? Amen. How many of you feel that way? Yes, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. He's sending us somewhere. We're, we're going somewhere. Right. We're going to do great things for God. Amen. We're living in a day and a time that I think it is most crucial time that we've ever lived in. That the church be not only one who says one thing, Brother Newton, but they also do it indeed. That's right. Amen. It's one thing that we say we pray for individuals, but it's another thing that somebody finds you, and I didn't know that Sister Cindy was going to say anything about that. But it's one thing that you say you pray for people, Amen. and I've just got to this place in my life that we're maybe I'm over 50 now, Amen. and I have realized that when people tell me to pray for them that I get busy and I forget about it. So I have learned the, if they ask me to pray, I go ahead and pray. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, I didn't know the security guard was going to be standing over there behind me watching everything I was doing, but I didn't care. I was going to pray. Amen. Did not know this lady, but I felt led of the spirit to pray for her. So I prayed. No, we don't know what to do. But if we're as the church, don't begin to. What we say in here, we do out there. Right. Amen. The fact remains that we're living in a time to where so many ministers and, and leaders in the church that are falling by the wayside. Just one air. I mean, the news is covered with it lately. Now, I want to lay this foundation to you. We're living in a crucial time. That where the church speaks a good game, right. Come here. but we've got to fulfill. That's right. We've got to not only talk it in here, but we've got to apply it that's out right. there. Come and that's on. really what this vision is about right. that the Lord is going. But we're not going to talk about that tonight. I don't want to talk about keeping a good house. How many of you know that everybody, there's always somebody that is assigned to watch you? Not just your family is watching you, your children is watching you, but there's always somebody around you watching you, watching what you're doing, watching how you're reacting, watching how in the situation, the hardest time in your life, they see how you react to it. Right. And they hear you talk about in church about, you know, have faith and, and, and believe God and trust God when it's not you, but you're praying for them. But then when something happens in your life, they're looking and seeing if the words you said to them, somebody help me tonight, are the same words that you apply to yourself. Amen. So it's crucial that we, in the time we're living in right now, is we back up what we say with right. our deeds. Right. Good deeds will not get you into heaven. Good deeds will not win your relationship with Jesus Christ. We understand because most of you, everybody I believe is believers in here that only through kneeling at the cross and asking Jesus to forgive you will you have that relationship. And it's through that relationship that I want to talk about how we keep a good house. Mm -hmm. How many of you know that housework is hard work? Amen. I, I, I ain't hearing too many men tonight, all the women clean out. Am I the only man here? <laughs> Housework, I would rather get in the yard and cut grass in 120 degrees to do housework. <laughs> Give me the bugs and mosquitoes, and I, I really despise them, but put me in the yard when it comes to housework. Well, nobody likes to have to apply words that we read in the scripture to our lives so that we can fulfill and be a person not only of word but of deed. Right. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of folk don't read the scripture and get in depth in the scripture right. because the scripture is not read there just to be read. It changes you. That's right. Mm -hmm. It causes you to do better. better. It right. challenges you to do better. Right. And some people say, well, the less I read, then the less I have to worry about. Well, may I tell you, that's not the right attitude to have. Right. The right yeah. attitude is, is that I want to learn. I want to grow right. in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be the best Christian. 
Christian I can be. I want to best, be the best believer that I can be for His glory, not mine. You see, the Word of God, according to verse 16, the Word of God, the words of Jesus, the Holy Scripture, must be continually read, studied, meditated upon, and prayed over until it richly, listen to me, richly dwells within us. Right. Amen. Not just on Sunday when the preacher preaches it, but it's something that flows. Right. It, he said, the Spirit brings it to your remembrance. You're, you're in a room and you're praying for somebody and all of a sudden you begin to quote scriptures uh, that right. you didn't even realize. But why? Because the Word is inside of you right. and the Word will come out of you and then you will begin to minister. That's why Jesus told the disciples, He said, don't worry about what you're going to say at that right. hour because He knew that the Spirit would be inside them and the right. Spirit will speak through them and give them the words to say. Amen. Some people say, well, I don't know how to approach somebody that's fighting cancer. I don't know how to approach it. All you have to do is pray right. and let the Spirit, let the Word get inside of you, and then when you have those moments, then, then the Spirit tells you what right. to say. The Spirit <laughs> helps you to minister to them. I found it through the years that sometimes you don't really have to say anything. Most right. of the time the people are just wanting somebody, Sister Sanders, to hear them out. Somebody right. just wants you to uh, just have an open ear to hear yeah. them, and then once you listen, the Spirit shows you how to right. minister right. to them. Right. It's in that experience that the thoughts and the words and the deeds and the motivations that when you're talking to people, they're influencing, they're, they're influencing and control. But when we have the Word of God inside of us, and it won't just be the you see, the Word gets, and I want to express this tonight, when the Word gets in you, right. it's like Jeremiah said, it's like fire, fire shut up in your bones, right. and you've got to do something with yes. it. Amen. You, 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 got, you can't just read it and, and not apply it. Right. You, you've yeah. got to do something, because yes. the more you get healed and, and His words inside of you, the more you're motivated and influenced by the Spirit to stop and pray in hospitals, to stop and pray in Walmart, to, to reach in your back pocket and, and buy somebody lunch because uh, you know that the scripture is admonishing you to do, to do that. Right. Amen. You see, the psalmist said it this way, it's how powerful the word when it gets in you, how it controls your deeds. Amen. This is how the psalmist said this. He said in Psalms 119 and 11, he said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In other words, he's saying the word of God gets inside of me and motivates me not to sin against God. Right. Amen. So the word is powerful. Somebody look at your neighbor and say the word is powerful. The word is powerful. Not only is the word, but spiritual songs and hymns and psalms that we would read and teaching right. the word, admonishing us. Now look at verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now I'm going to give you some principles here, seven things. That I'm going to show you. You see, the Bible presents general principles that permit the spirit-led believer to determine the rightness and the wrongness of actions. Some people say when they get ready to do something, they'll ask somebody, does the Bible say this is wrong? Anybody ever been there? They'll ask you to say, well, is this wrong? Does the Bible say it's wrong? And, you know, let's take a subject. Let's just pick a subject. Drinking. I've, 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 I've counseled more people and talked to more people about drinking than any other subject there is. If you got to ask whether it's wrong or not, somebody help me tonight. I hope I ain't got no drinkers in the house. But if you've got to ask me whether it's wrong or not, then your conscience has already told you that. That's right. That's right. And this is what the writer is telling us, Paul is saying, because the Bible, even though it may not touch on every subject, there are seven principles that we can see and live by to find out whether it's wrong or not. Let me give them to you tonight. In everything we say and do, we must ask these following questions. You might want to write these down in case you might have to give them to somebody. Can it, number one, can it be done?
done for the glory of God? Can you take something, can you take a, but we'll use alcohol tonight. Can you take alcohol and lift it up to the sky and say, this is for the glory of God? No. I've never seen anybody, and when I was in a club or a bar, Lord forgive me for bringing up my past, but I have never seen anybody held it up and said, this is for the glory of God and chuck a look at that. So can it be done for the glory of God? 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, whatsoever ye do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen. No matter what you do, whether it's alcohol, whether it's anything that you do, can it be done by giving, giving glory to God? Number two, can it be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you ask the Lord's blessing upon it? How many, am I the only one that, that maybe I'm not, I, I, I believe in this house full of believers, but how many of you still bless your food? Amen. I'm going to say something to preach on that if you ain't raised your hand. Preach on it. Oh, get me stirred up. I still pray over my food. Now, we used to laugh because uh, Sister Morgan's dad, he took that opportunity to pray for everybody in the house. <laughs> and, we were, <laughs> and we were starving. <laughs> and you had a big old uh, ham in there being cooked in Coca-Cola. Anybody know about ham cooked in Coca-Cola, how sweet that thing is? You bring it out, it smells, hit you, and we'd be like standing there before the boss. We love them all too, but please. <laughs> But he prayed because he believed that was the moment and the time he was giving thanks for all of his family. He was giving right. thanks for the food. And so years after, I, I always wanted, and I would do anything to hear him pray one of those amen. long prayers again. Somebody got a loved one and That's you right. do it that way, say amen. 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 Can it be done? Can you ask his blessing upon it? John 14 and 13 said, Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do that my Father may be glorified in the Son. That's right. So, we're using alcohol tonight. So, could you ask the Lord to bless my alcohol? Mm -hmm. No. You couldn't ask the Lord to bless your drinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might be. Some people that might be crazy enough to do that. I would scared to be dropped dead from it. Right. Right. Amen. Number three. Can it be done while sincerely giving thanks to God? Here again, will it bring glory or will it bring a reproach? Oh, I feel like preaching here. Come on. For too long, the deeds that we're doing is we're looking more as the deeds that would bring a reproach on us, but we don't understand that what brings a reproach on us is bringing a reproach on God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. And when we get to that place to where we're more worried about ourselves and not the reputation of God, right. yep. oh Lord help us. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if I'm going to drink, which I'm not, I know Facebook is recording that, so I better make sure they get me straight here. Or they'll say the pastor down there in Georgetown is an alcoholic. <laughs> Can it bring glory, or will it bring glory, or will it bring reproach? Right. Number four. Is it a Christ, this is a big one, is it a Christ-like One of the most detrimental things right now is social media. It really is. How do you, how, because of all the things that are going on right now, Brother Tanner, I have seen people comment things that are Christians that comment on stuff on Facebook. And do you know that what is commented on Facebook stays on Facebook? And if you're a Christian and you comment, I am saying you can't verse your opinion on stuff, but be careful 
how you do that. That was sure our quiet. Listen. Be careful what you do. May I tell you that they are people right now, ministers, that have lost their churches because they went ahead on social media and commented on stuff that's going on right now. See, we are now believers. We are held to a higher standard. Yes. Amen. We're not supposed to. Y'all sure? I'm a, I'm a, I may want to stay here a little while. Preach it, brother. What is it? How many? Who could give me a definition of what it means to be a Christian? To be Christ like. To be a Christian means to be Christ like. Amen. If we are anything less, then we're not being Christian like. No. We're not being like Jesus. Like the old saints, to be like Jesus. That is our goal. To be Christ-like. Listen to what the Bible said. 1 John 2 and 6. He that saith he abide in him, mm, all himself also to walk even as he walks. That's challenging. That's that's that hits it to the core. That's right. Amen. Because if we're gonna, the problem with society right now, and the problem that's infiltrating the church, oh Lord, help me preach right now. Jesus. Is that everybody wants to be a Christian and everybody wants the title of the Christian, but nobody wants to walk like Jesus walks. That's right. Amen. Nobody wants to do what Jesus does. Nobody wants to react the way Jesus did. Yes. You see, when we get in that stage and we get in that point in our lives, and, and I'm not being mean, I'm telling you how to keep a good house, and, and the way you've got to keep a good house is you've got to watch what you say, you've got to watch what you do. You see, you can't keep a good house as soon as every time you come in the door, you gentlemen, we're going to get in trouble here, and take your old, big old nasty socks off and shoes off, and, and, and as far as I'll go with all that, socks and throw them over in the middle of the floor where you just cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to make a point. <laughs> and you ladies, you can't kick them flip flops off that you've been sweating <laughs> in all day long. <laughs> no of them things stink. <laughs> and place them in the floor where you just swept and you just cleaned. The point yes. is this. We can't come in here on Sunday yes. and and preach and, and shout and, yes. and, and have church and speak in tongues as a right. spirit and then go right back out during the week and put our dirty, dirty sandals on right. and kick on our dirty right. socks and, and throw them down where we've had a clean house. Yes. That's right. Yes, amen. Good for Number five. Will it weaken the sincere conviction of other Christians? Wow. How many have ever heard this statement? Why do I want to go to church? There ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites in church. Anybody beside me ever heard that? You want to tell you why that is? They've watched too many people live a double life. Right. They've watched too many people and it's hurt the witness of the church. Yes. Amen. Some people say, well, I'll never go to church again because so-and-so, he'll hang out on the club and then he'll be up on stage singing Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, somebody help me to hear you. <laughs> and what we got to understand is this, is that what we do is there's always somebody watching. And if you do something that is offensive, see, Paul even writes in, this, in Corinthians and he said he wouldn't even eat meat mm -hmm. because it would offend his brother. Yes. He wouldn't drink certain drinks because yes. it offended his brother. Yes. Now, I'm not saying, you know, if you want real bad and, and if it offends you, and give them some chicken or something. But what I'm trying to say to you is this, is we've got to understand we have to be conscious of the things that we do. Let me put it to you this way. When you're having something that, that is going on in your life and then maybe somebody's rebellious against you or somebody's putting you down, maybe 
Maybe somebody walked up to Charlene and, and is putting Charlene down and, and just and just picking up, pulled up in the bank window. And I don't think you're at the window no more, but she's in, to say she was at the window and this person comes in there and they're just blessing her out because she didn't give them twenties and, and then they wanted twenties and, and they blessed her out. Well, she's got a couple of more people and all of a sudden she lashes back out at these other people that are over here in the other line and she didn't see Sister so-and-so that was down here who had a lot of confidence in her and said and, and, and she Charlie forgot to turn the microphone on while she was cutting not saying you would but she was cussing this woman out she don't cuss a little does she but she was, she was cussing this woman out over here and she didn't turn the microphone down and most of the time you can hear her anyway and she's blessing this woman out. Well, sister so-and-so over here who had confidence in Charlene has now lost her confidence in Charlene and you can hardly ever, listen to me, you can hardly ever get that back. And so we, through the years, what has happened is so many instances like that have happened, Brother Tanner, that we've done got to this place to where people don't have confidence in people in church no more. And what the Lord is calling us to do is keep a better house, keep a better place, keep a better witness, keep a better testimony. And when you're around, listen, me and my wife don't talk about y'all till we get home. <laughs> Nobody hears it but Spanky. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> and it's all good. My mom and my dad used to have this when they were married that they would never argue in front of the kids. Never would argue. If mom and dad both started getting heated up about something, they would send us to the room. And they'd say, turn that old big old, you know, one of the big old 33 record things thing was so heavy you couldn't move it out of the wall. I think when we left the house, we left it stuck to the wall. <laughs> and they would turn that thing on and turn the music up and then they'd go into another room and they'd go at it. I remember that as a child. What we have to do is we have to be understanding that somebody and will I weaken their walk with the Lord? Yes. Amen. Will I weaken them and cause them to turn away from the Lord? Yes. Yeah. Something to think about. Right. Number six. Will it weaken my desire for spiritual things, God's word and prayer? Some people get involved in things that pull them away from church. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying people can't play sports. I'm a sports fanatic. I'm not saying people can't fish. I love to fish. I'm not saying people can't hunt. But anything that you do that pulls you away from God, you better quit. That's true. Because yes. I'm going to tell you, we're living in a day and a time you better get as close as you can get to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Listen to this. Luke 8 and 14. And that which fell among the thorns, they which are that heard, talking about the soul and the sea, go forth and they choke with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit unto perfection. We who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ must always be aware of the temptation to get caught up in temporal things of this life and lose our spiritual desire in the process. Right. You say it'll never happen to me. I'll never do anything like that. Never say never. That's right. Amen. Because something you really enjoy, if you let it gain an edge on you, mm -hmm. will carry you further than you ever want to go. I'm not saying it's sin, because it ain't right. sin to play softball, is it? <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to shout right there. <laughs> it's not sin to play baseball or fish, hunt. It's not even wrong to go eat a big fat cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> but what we have to understand is 
is, is anything that will cause us. I remember one time the Lord did this to me. My grandma would always say, as long as you went to church on Sunday morning, in between church time, you could go fishing, do that, as long as you were back for evening time service. Well, if that's where you get your relaxation, that's between you and the Lord. But what I did is I found out that every time I would go, the fish would start, they wouldn't be biting. Brother Newton, all of Brother Wesley, they wouldn't be biting nothing from lunchtime all the way up to church started at 6 o'clock. And about 4.30, something to 5, the fish would just start tearing it up. Every time, every time, you'd fish and fish and fish, and you'd get right there in that time, and then I, you would, what happened was this, that I would miss, sometimes I would miss going back because the fish was by. And then I started to get in that place where I was under conviction because of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'll do on Sunday now? I just go home, I eat, and I get, lay down in the bed and just sleep, and just, I ain't got to worry about the fish or nothing. <laughs> But what I'm saying to you, be careful. That's right. Be careful. Yes. Because you can get some people are so hooked on social media mm -hmm. that social media just drives them whatever they do, and then they will stay at home just to be on social media. Mm -hmm. Last of all, will it weaken or hinder my witness for Christ? Some of the scriptures I'm going to read to you, the very last one is what our vision is, and this is leading up to it. Matthew 5, 13 and 16 said, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, where will it be salt? Mm -hmm. If you lose your witness, it's hard to ever get it back. It's true. It stands for good for nothing, but it's cast out and trodden under the foot of man. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill, I feel the Holy Ghost, that cannot be hid. We are the body of Christ. We should keep a good, clean house. Right. Amen. For multiple reasons, but one is that we are the light in this dark and dying world. This world is looking for answers. This world is looking for the truth. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lot of gimmicks out there. There's a lot of strange churches. There's a lot of strange doctrine. But I can tell you that when you work in word. And it, you can back it up with deed. And it's according to the word of God. If it does not line up with this word. We cannot do it. That's right. Amen. Amen. And it's. The time that we're living in, people are looking for that true light. Listen to verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a, on a candlestick, that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. <laughs> there is nothing more inviting, nothing that can give you peace, like having a good, clean house. Amen. Amen. My wife, when she gets ready to go see her mom or something, we clean the house, top and bottom. I said, ain't going to be nobody here but me while we clean the house. Because it gives her peace yeah. in knowing that that house is clean, that when she comes yeah. back, that house is going to be clean. Well, it better be. <laughs> but nothing gives you more comfort right. than when you know people are coming over, Brother Newton, and you know people are going to come in the house that you know that you, hallelujah, you have a good, clean house. Because a good, clean house is inviting. Oh, I feel like preaching. A good, clean house will draw people. When they know, they say, oh, you go over to the Morgans, oh, you go over to the Parsons, they keep a good, clean house. Well, it's the same way with your walk with the Lord. Right. That when they know that you keep a good, clean house, that, that you live what you say, you right. do what the Bible said, and you're attractive to individuals that were looking for the light because they know you know how to keep a good, clean house. That you're not walking around and throwing your skeletons in the closet because right. there's no skeletons left in there. You put them all under the blood of Jesus, and you right. know how to keep your house. Therefore, it's inviting, and the church has got to keep a good, clean house. We've got to
to understand that God is going to send people here. And we can't be half in and half out. We've got to possess our, our vessels with honor and be the Lord, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ for His glory and His honor. Yes, amen. So then verse 16, and this is my main scripture, Sunday morning. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. I'll share this with you because in closing, and I'll share it again Sunday morning. But I don't know what it is about you. Y'all just bring this out of me on Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. I'll be sharing Sunday morning before we ever got voted in down here, I saw what the Lord wanted us to do. Mm -hmm. I even said, Lord, we didn't even got voted yet. But I knew when he gave me that vision, I knew it was time. And here's what the vision was. I was laying in the bed, and I saw people sitting in darkness. I saw people of all ages. I saw young kids that were sitting in darkness and, and in the room they would be. And I can't share all this and I haven't got time. But I saw young kids as young kids were sitting in the darkness. And, and parents were screaming and hollering in the other room. And all of a sudden a person, a Christian would go walk into the room. And all of a sudden darkness would begin to fade and then I saw a single mom that was just sitting over to one side and she was crying and wondering and the kids were all around her and she was wondering how she was going and it was covered in darkness and, and then all of a sudden somebody walked in in the light. And it just went on and on with situation after situation after situation that where we would walk in, a Christian would walk in, and it was different faces, and I didn't know it would be some of your faces, because I'd never, I'd only seen you one time, and that had been three years ago. But as we would walk in that room, and you would walk in, as if the darkness had to flee because the light had come into the room. And we're going to be that light. Amen. Jesus is going to shine. Hallelujah. Going to shine through us. And we're not going to talk about ministry. We're going to do ministry. Amen. We're not going to talk about it in word. We're going to show it in deed. Jesus said, be the light. We'll be the light. Jesus said, go into highways and hedges. We're going into the highways and in the hedges. Because time is short. Yes, yes. The field hobbles sometimes. The field is wide unto harvest. We need to pray that God send forth laborers out into the harvest. Because it's ready. The Lord is about to come back. And he is ready. And we have been chosen to be those people. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go out and be that light. In a dark and dying world. Yes, thank you, the United States has never been as dark as what it is right now. Right. And we're on Georgetown Church of God. We're going to be the light that Jesus Christ wants us to be. Stand your feet all over this house. The only one that can clean your house. Funny thing about cleaning houses. Some people hire Thank you, Holy Ghost. I never thought of it this way. Some people hire somebody else to clean their house. But you see, when you hire somebody else to clean your house, you're very easily to get it dirty again because you don't know the labor that it took to clean it. And when you think about that, when you get to your walk with the Lord, and you want it, you get to where you get your house cleaned. You don't want nobody to come in and trash your house. That's right. And you don't want to trash it yourself. Right. I want to pray tonight that we all keep a good, clean house. I feel like we do, but it is more expedient now, folks, than it has ever been before. Yes. We have got 
to be the genuine body of Christ. Because there's too many counterfeits. There's too many half-lit candles. We need to be that light that goes into the darkness, mm -hmm. penetrates the darkness, and the darkness, hallelujah, has to flee. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word tonight. Lord, let us not be a church of only word, but let us be a word indeed. Let us be individuals that are keeping our house in order, keeping our house clean. That we can be the light. You see, Lord, if, if we only have the outside of the glass, the, the, when the outside of the glass is dirty on a lantern, you can't see the light. But when you clean that glass, that light begins to penetrate the darkness. Lord, help us to keep our vessels in the honor for your glory. Help us to do and be sensitive to your spirit. That you will lead us and guide us that we will be the light in the darkness. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Share the word. We'll be...